Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Watson, and I am the Chief Operating Officer at Mix. I wanna thank you all so much for taking time out of your very busy lives to join us for tonight's conversation about deciding if college is the right next step for you or for your child if you're a parent or for your grandchild if you're a grandparent, et cetera. Uh, we just did introductions, um, so let me just uh, cut to the chase and cover a couple quick logistics. You've already seen that the chat feature is enabled, so feel free throughout tonight's conversation to post questions or comments in there. Uh, we will have time for a formal Q&A at the end, but we'll do our best to keep an eye on the chat. And if we don't answer your question during the session tonight, we'll definitely follow up with you after the event. Um, second, we are recording this session, as you can see, and we plan to send out the recording after the event. So if you have to drop early, or if you want to share this with someone else who might be interested, we will make that easy for you. Please do keep yourselves muted. I'm pretty sure we just did that for everybody. So you might have to actually unmute yourself when we do Q&A, but that's fine. Okay, um, those of you who have just joined in the last couple minutes, um, you probably don't see the chat history, but we asked everyone to post their name, where they're from and who they are, what hat they're wearing. So student, parent, counselor, industry expert, grandparent, investor, et cetera. Um, so those of you who just joined, please please do that. Please just post in the chat, it's gonna be very informal. Um, it was a nice visual scan of everyone who's here. A lot of diversity um, from the US, which is exciting. Okay, I'm gonna introduce myself and then we will get into why we are all here tonight. So. I'm here both at this event and working at Mix because I have two amazing, very different children. My daughter is 15. She is a sophomore in high school. She has been planning for college since she was like six. She is definitely on the traditional path. She does musical theater and speech and debate. She's passionate about school. She gets good grades. She's already thinking about what kind of college is right for her. She's mature and confident driven and yes, I am aware of how lucky I am as I say that. My son is 12, he is in seventh grade and he's what I'll call a non-conformist. He is passionate about gaming, too passionate in my opinion, uh, anime, volleyball, TikTok, also too passionate about TikTok. And he seems to sort of tolerate or endure school, although a few subjects sometimes light him up. He is the sweetest, most loving, most empathetic kid who is still working on making his bed every day. So he's young, you know, but already I can tell that the traditional education path might not serve him well. I just don't think he's going to be ready. I think he'll need to get into the world and experience life a bit, try some things, meet new people, get to know himself better, figure out what he really cares about. Now, having said that, I have to admit that there's this gravitational pull toward college because that's what I did. That's what I know. Now, obviously I want what's best for my son and I want whatever path he chooses to set him up for success in life. I mean, that's what all parents want, right? I'm just not sure what that path should look like to best support him. And that is really the theme tonight, uncertainty. At Mix, as you can imagine, we talk with students and their parents every day. And the common theme is that they're not sure what the right next step is. This is such an important time in a young person's life, this transition from adolescence to being an independent adult. And deciding, deciding whether to go to college and if not college, then what? It's a huge decision. And for decades, the choice was obvious, right? College was the default path to life and career success. But now there are a ton of people, myself included, who just aren't sure. So what's changed? Why is our calculation different today? So Adam, if you'll bring up my slide, I want to share, I wanna share three of the reasons that come up most often with anyone questioning the traditional path. And the first is the traditional path, it's college. We all know the statistics, college keeps getting more expensive, it's harder to get into the best schools, fewer students are graduating and getting well-paying jobs that use their degree, and too many leave with serious and sometimes debilitating student loan debt. The second reason is that a college degree just isn't as valuable as it used to be. And yes, it kind of pains me to say that. 89% of employers today, 89% say that new college grads are not work ready. 
meaning they do not hit the ground running on day one. So the degree is no longer this sort of singular proxy for a candidate's potential. Oh, you went to UC Berkeley? You're going to be a high performer. We'll hire you. Check, check. It no longer works like that. In fact, a growing number of companies like Google and Apple are starting to eliminate the degree requirement altogether. And instead, they're qualifying candidates based on what they know and what they know how to do. So their skills and their experience. Also, think about the experts' prediction that I'm sure you've heard as well, that 85% of jobs that today's learners will be doing in 10 years haven't been invented yet. And they'll work 18 jobs spanning six careers in their lifetime. So can a single academic experience and degree today really prepare you for this? Already today, 40% of recent college grads are underemployed meaning they're working jobs that don't require a degree. And the third reason is what matters and what doesn't matter to Gen Z, the learners. First, they don't trust that traditional education and then climbing the corporate ladder is gonna lead to stable and long-term employment. They saw their parents get laid off in the 2008 recession. They see them still paying off college debt from decades ago. Second, Gen Z is really entrepreneurial. They're digital natives, right? They've only known tech and access to unlimited information since birth, which has resulted in a really empowered DIY generation. Over half of Gen Zers today, over half, say they hope to run their own business in the next decade. And with startup costs plummeting and incubators springing up in every city, this career path feels really attainable to a lot of young people. Third, Gen Z expects practically everything in their world to be personalized because that's been their experience. From iPhone home screens to Bitmojis to Spotify playlists, they kind of reject one size fits all. Wait, all poli sci majors have to take the same prerequisites that I don't really care about? No, thank you. Finally, Gen Z is very comfortable learning online as we've all seen during this pandemic. However, they do recognize the limitations of studying alone from you know, their parents' basement. They know real world experience and belonging to a community really matter. Speaking of community, I would like to introduce you now to two of our incredible mixed students who have joined us tonight so that you can hear from them how they thought through some of these issues and ultimately decided not to follow the traditional path. So if you would join me uh, in saying hello to Jackson and, and you're not going to believe this, but I swear I'm not making it up, Mixie. Welcome Jackson and Mixie. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, you guys. It's so good to see, it's so good to see you both again. First of all, thank you so much for giving us some of your time tonight. I know both of you are super busy preparing to leave for the mix house and join Adam and Abby in Costa Rica in just a few days. So huge thank you from all of us. Um, so we'll get we'll get right into it. So I'd love for each of you to share briefly why you were questioning the traditional college path and then how you went about deciding what to do next. And Mixie, we'll start with you. So I actually um, <clears throat> graduated early from high school um, and I was planning on taking uh, community college courses, but something in me had always kind of felt like that wasn't the right next step. And then um, I was not really looking into any travel programs, even though that is really where I wanted to be. Um, I just didn't think it was going to be attainable um, at where I am right now in life. And then I stumbled across um, a mix advertisement and I spoke to Abby, who is absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, and she pretty much walked me through it step by step and made it all possible. Um, so yeah, I, I, ne I, I found mix out of the blue and it was definitely an amazing decision. Awesome. Thanks, Mixie. I have a couple follow-up questions, but I'm going to let Jackson answer that question next. Um, yes. Could you ask the question one more time just to yeah, of course, fresh it of up course. in my head? Of course. It's, it's, so why were you questioning the traditional college path? And how did you decide ultimately what to do next? 
yeah yeah um so i uh was kind of that typical kid that didn't really like school that much um i got through i got by as uh necessary like b's a's c here and there um didn't really want to go to college right out of high school uh but i didn't like there was really no other option um i guess so i went to one semester of uh i'm from delaware so i went to university of delaware applied to one college got in went to one semester and uh did not it just never really felt right to me i um I had passions that I wanted to work on. I had projects that I wanted to work on, but school was just not allowing me to follow those passions. So I talked to my parents and we made a compromise to instead I would take some online music classes because I was super into music at the time. So I took some online classes, which traditional online classes are like, in my opinion, they're not the best. Um, that's one thing that the mix is doing so well, in my opinion, changing a hybrid of online and in person, but I'm sure they'll talk about that later. Um, so yeah, college was just, I almost felt like I had to do it in a way, um, as I feel a lot of people feel that same way. And then um, I'm super into memoirs and I read a bunch of books and I wanted to travel. And then later down the road, after I was done taking online music schools, I was potentially looking into the film industry. But then I was like, I don't want to commit to a four year degree of film school because in the end, I might not even like it. And it's a lot of money and all of that. So then uh, it was one of the most serendipitous events of my life. I saw, I found Mix and I was like, it bridged the gap of me being able to study something without committing to a four year degree to see if I like it. And also I get to travel because I really wanted to do that. I've never done it. Um, it felt, I have a video of me right after finding out about Mix. I, I was like, is this what something good happening feels like? Cause it was been a while since that happened. And um, being a Mix student, having done it, which is crazy to say, um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, hopefully that answered the question somewhere in there. Oh, definitely. I want to unpack like that in 10 different ways, but we're so short on time. Mixie, I just want to come back to you. Um, you know, I got to know you a bit in, in Miami last semester, and I heard you talk from time to time about the importance of community in your experience. And other than obviously your fellow mixed students, and you know, a lot of them have become friends, like what aspect of community has had the biggest impact on you while at Mix? Um, definitely. Yeah. Like you had said, um, the, we call it family at mix, um, the family we made, uh, just in our house in Miami, um, and not just us students, also the entire staff, um, and everyone they brought in to visit, but mix also, um, really highlights the importance of making connections in this world. And I had really never touched on that throughout school. Um, nobody really talks about how important it is. Um, so yeah, Mix introduced me to so many amazing people, including Gary V, which was absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> um, yeah. And one of them now is um, who will be setting me up with an internship and hopefully will be helping me step through, step <laughs> slowly, um, get into the career I'm, I've been hoping for, so. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, who is Gary V? Uh, how do you describe Gary V? <laughs> <laughs> Google him. Uh, he's an influencer. He's a marketing expert. He is a larger than life personality. He is now kind of famous for NFT activities. Um, and he talks a lot about college and when, and when it's right and when it's not right. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. I don't, yeah. Thank you for posting some information. You kind of have to experience Gary Vee for yourself. Um, I want to just pull that thread a little bit that you started mixing and talking about community and ask you Jackson, because I know that you also, um, and I'd be curious to know how intentional this was, but you also cultivated a pretty interesting network while you were in Miami. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's mind blowing the people that uh, I was introduced to and, and I consider my friends in Miami. I'm actually there back right now uh, because 
the people that I met are hosting this crazy event that they said come out to. Um, yeah, so uh, my dad, I remember being in like fourth grade or something. My dad would tell me like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And for some reason it stuck with me, but I never like practiced that. And then um, at Mix, uh, just one, the people at the house, like I was, um, I went to college. I lived on a dorm, had an RA, had my four people, but I never talked to any of them outside of like two or three of them. But Mix, every person that lived at the house, like Mixie said, is like family. Um, but more of the like professional side, I'd say, of the networking. Um, I mean, Adam introduced me to someone that I can now talk to, like a, a film industry expert, just to get my feet a little bit wet in that and see if I like it. And um, just connecting you with people that are in your interests, one, which is a really big um, factor to show you if you really like it. Because one of the best things about Mix, in my opinion, is finding out what you don't want to do. Because when you find that out in an uh, environment like Mix, so many people changed their class the first weekend maybe like or a month in and being able to talk to people as you transfer through those different um endeavors was uh game changing i've never had any experience like it and it is it leaves me speechless honestly I, it's it's amazing i love that i love that both of you highlighted that the ability to try things the ability to not know what you want to do next and that that's okay, right? And you get to experiment and fail and and all that. I mean, my my sophomore daughter was asked by her counselor just last week what she wants to major in in college. I was like, she's a sophomore. Like, she's not supposed to know. I don't want her to know, you know? So it seems like that resonates with you guys. And uh, certainly the ability to change your mind uh, and get some guidance in real time and make these connections. Um, it's a very intimate um high touch, really personalized experience. Um, I have a million more questions for you and I'm sure the audience would love to hear more from you. I'm going to move us along because I want to make sure that we cover all the things we're going to cover, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that we're going to come back to you during the Q&A session. So please stick around. Thank you both for sharing your story. There's so much wonderful wonderfulness um about uh, your experience both before, during, uh, and, and presumably will be after mix. So thank you both again for being here and we'll come back to you in a little bit. Okay, so now you've heard the sort of big considerations that usually come up in our conversations with students and with parents. And now um, we'd love to hear from you in the audience. So again, using chat, what did you hear tonight that resonated most with you? And what factors didn't come up that are influencing your decision-making right now? So just go ahead and type away in the chat. Don't be shy. Think about what might be causing you anxiety or worry or what is making the decision hard or if you only had this information, it would be so helpful. Yes. We will get to the typical day or week at mix uh, in just a few minutes less. So thanks for posting that. Yes. We will also cover the application process. You guys are asking great questions. Thanks for teeing us up. <laughs> I think it's really important, and I say this as a parent, um, to know that the things that I lose sleep over, the concerns I have um, about my own children and the decision-making process, I'm, I'm not alone. So talking to other parents, I'm reminded that I'm not alone, I'm not crazy. We are all going through a version of this sort of evaluation and thought process. Um, and I think just seeing some of the things you're posting here, um, I hope you all feel the same, you are not alone. And we, of course, are capturing all of this. So I think we're going to address a lot of this that I'm seeing here. Um, oh, I love that. Uh, and we'll make sure that we cover everything, either today or, or after, for sure. These are great. These are great comments. OK, thank you for posting. Keep posting. We're not going to lose that. Um, 
I am going to introduce you now to Abby Brody, Mix's fearless founder and our chief learning officer. And she's gonna talk about why she started Mix and then describe our unique approach to learning and living and how we help our students pursue their goals. So Abby, over to you. Hello, thank you, Karen. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us. I am dialing in from Mix House in Costa Rica. This is our co-learn. Next to me is Adam Levin, the head of experience, our chief experience officer. We are here setting up the campus and pretty soon Mixie and Jackson will be here with us. And we are counting the days, I know they are too. I am foremost a mother, just like Karen, and a mother who demands more for their child. The world has changed so rapidly. And as a parent, it's so overwhelming on how we help them navigate it. And when I look at the traditional path um, as an educator for the last 15 years and have graded schools all over the world, I, I wonder if we are setting up our students for success and that this path, that this traditional college that was created 300 years ago has any relevance to the economy and the world that we have today. That caught me on a path of spending four years studying the return on investment of higher ed and looking at the gaps between real life, life success and education and where those two things meet and where they're colliding and not meshing with the one goal of creating an educational system that graduates students with clarity of what's next and the skills and confidence to achieve it. When I mean clarity of what's next, as someone who's created schools in K-12 and pushed our students to the best universities in the world, and we're so proud of it, they walked out with no idea what they were doing. And 78% of them never used their degree of study they got in college. And as a mother who has children entering that age uh, stage soon, I knew that we could do better, that there needs to be a place where we can incubate our students to be life ready, not just work ready, but life ready. And that is what the mix is all about. So what we did over the last four years is we remixed education. We took the best practices that are research-based out of universities, but we also looked outside universities and dived deep into the cognitive sciences in particular. We know a lot about how the brain learns. And I can tell you one thing, it's not by sitting in a lecture, it's by doing. So let me tell you a little bit about how we do that. So like Tetris, Mix is experience where students curate their education. Often education is done to them. They're passive, they're freshmen, they're sophomore, they're juniors, and they're just along for the ride. Much of what we hear, and, I, and we believe one of the reasons why 70% of students who drop out, drop, uh, drop out in that first freshman year is because they don't understand the why. They don't see how these classes and these large lectures have an outcome to their success. They don't see their passions or interests or strengths taking account. So at Mix, students help create their education and curate it to meet their distinct needs. I've yet to meet, and I meet with hundreds of students, even in a given week, one that's the same. Everyone comes from a different background and has different needs and wishes. So our education is foremost holistic. And this is very important to us. To be life ready, you need to be whole. We talk about purpose. We talk about strengths. We talk about weaknesses. We also talk about wellness. You know, mental health is now the biggest crisis on college campuses. 79% of students are having mental health crises, but they're not getting served. It used to be, why are students dropping out? Number one, always number one, financial is now tied with mental health. So we need to do better and really talk about the whole student. Foremost is personalization. Your student demands nothing less. It's the only world they know, as Karen said. it. At Mix, every student is on their own individualized path. Mixie and Jackson have very different interests and needs. They each have their own, we're going to call it course, uh, course mix, which I'm going to dig into in a little bit, that allows them to personalize their education to get to their next step that looks different for each individual. And we say something out loud that many universities don't. It doesn't necessarily mean a degree. We believe in helping our students reach that goal in the cheapest and most efficient way possible. Sometimes it will require a degree and sometimes it won't. And it's up to the students to decide the path, but we lay them out for them. 
and then modern. As I mentioned, our university system looks very similar than it did 300 years ago. Mix, we have taken the best practices and remixed them. And one of the things we're really proud of is giving our students the top content across the world. Even at the top learning institutions, your chances of being taught by the professional professor of expert in that field is less than 15% in your first two years. Most undergraduate classes are taught by graduate students or um, adjunct professors visiting. There is a difference in content between your intro to marketing course at your community college versus Wharton, who, does, who is a leader in the field. Online education allows our students to have the best, to be taught by the foremost experts at a fraction of the price. Super empowering, but, 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 online alone will not solve it all. We know that in-person has a 51% successful rate and success here is just graduating. Even it takes them eight to 10 years. Although online, and many of you might have experienced this during the pandemic, is in the 20%. You need community, you need people. We are social beings and learning needs to have meaning and you need to do it. And that's why we are a hybrid environment that places just as much emphasis, if not more, on the experiential side so that students graduate with more just than just a piece of paper. When creating the mix, we talk to major learn, uh, HR departments at organizations and we ask them, what are you looking for and how do you find people? And they just express real frustration at the process. Because what does this piece of paper tell me? So they graduated with a bachelor's degree in marketing from Syracuse. I don't know what that means as an employer. What are the skills this student learned and how is that degree of marketing different than the one at a different university? Students at the mix graduate not just with the credential, which might be a degree in marketing, but the assets to show that they know how to do it. So every term, a mixer, and that's what we call our students and they name themselves that, um, the mixers will create a project to showcase mastery of that material. So when they do go for that job, they have stuff to show and stories to tell. I have a degree in marketing and I've also run six different marketing campaigns. Let me show you them. How we do that is through our Lego pieces or our Tetris pieces that are built in different ways for each student. The first and the most exciting one for me as chief uh, learning officer is the course mix. That is a time where students sit with someone on our education team and we talk about their dreams, their strengths, things they liked and didn't like, and we create a customized educational plan. And I'm going to show you one as an example next. Then we layer on the thing that makes learning sticky. As I mentioned, we do not learn by passively sitting. We know that a student who sits at a lecture and then takes the test, 85% of that information will be gone within a month. Gone, never happened. At Mix, our students apply that learning into real world settings. So they get real experience. In addition, we recognize that people need a coach. Everyone needs an ally. At Mix, each student has a one-to-one -one coach. This is someone that is there for their success and only their success only. In addition though, coaching is about their, their, the student as a whole, that holistic side. We also want our students to start that networking process. As Mixie said, we speak openly about the need to make, uh, understand networks and how to utilize them. We try to get our students as many mentors in the field that they're interested in to start talking hearing their stories. How is best to learn about construction management without talking to someone in construction management? What path did you take? How, what do you recommend for me? Our mixed students are having those conversations weekly. And then we're really passionate about teaching the things that for some reason universities don't feel like is worthy of teaching, but yet is required in life. Like, what is credit? How do I get a mortgage? Help me navigate insurance and taxes. We teach all those basic life and business skills. So our students, when they go out in the world and they get that first time they're renting that apartment and they get that contract, they have a basic command of contract law so they don't have to call their parents. They can feel independent and secure and confident to live their life. And at the core, and you heard it from our students, is community. We do not go over 150 students on a campus and that is very purposeful. 150 is a number uh, by the great anthropologist Dunbar called the Dunbar's ratio, where 
That is the number where you can create real enough real connections and not surface connections. We know where all of our students are. They, and we break bread together every Thursday night at our weekly mixer dinner. This is truly, as our students just told you themselves, a family. And the last piece is travel. And I know Adam's gonna talk a lot more about travel, but as an educator, I could not be more passionate about this piece. We know the number one thing you could do for your child is travel. Even when you look at studies of universities that allow one-to-one -one tutoring for their students to try to help their students succeed, the students, the number one thing that moves the needle is study abroad. Why is that? You will grow exponentially. You've gotta be lost to be found. So we push our students outside their comfort zones, gain a worldly view through the experience of travel. Now, let me dig a little deeper into um, these course mixes. This is my favorite part of the mix experience. And I think a part where, these, where our students go, wow, I never had someone sit down with me for an hour and talk about me and what I want. So many college uh, counselors, well-intentioned, have hundreds of students on their list. We have, we, this is some place where we put in the time to make sure every one of our students. This is an example of a student currently at Mix coming for his second semester. He came to Mix looking for clarity. Like many of us, he didn't know what, what major, what do I want to do with my life? And I will add, even those who think they know what they want to do, 78% of them are wrong, right? They never use their major. And I, I bet if we pulled all of you right now and you thought about your major and what you're doing now, I bet we would maybe even hit higher than that. So this is an example of a course mix. You'll see that online and in person is truly a hybrid experience that communicates with each other. For just $425, our student here, and that's how much his course mix costs and is part of the mix tuition, but just this part, he's going to the top, the experts in the field. So he's taking an architecture course from Harvard, and he's very interested in moving in that direction. He is gaining degree credits that will go towards a degree if he so chooses to move in that direction. When it came to his passion for math and art, we found the best course in regards to Fibonacci isn't in the United States, it's in Hong Kong. How incredible of an opportunity. People ask me all the time, what's the best college? Where should my student go? And I say, all of them. Pick the best from each. What an incredible opportunity. And then you'll notice that the third one isn't in a university. Sometimes our course mixes will include organizations like Google. You know, if we're going to study desi uh, design and frameworks, Google does it best. If you're going to want to learn about social media, the courses from Facebook are the best. And in this regard, the most talented, most dynamic mark, making, mark maker and artist is Brett Evanson. He's taking classes from that artist. But that is only 50% of this course mix. The rest comes alive in person. First, the student will be enrolled in our how-tos. You can see the, the term, all the uh, topics we'll be covering. My favorite being car maintenance. I will be sitting in on that one. And then, of course, learning based, place based learning. Our textbook is not a physical book, it's dynamic, it's real, it's full of real stories and people. It's our locations. We use our locations to unlock the meta skills that no matter what our students do are required. From communication, collaboration, and critical thinking skills, we do this by being out in the field doing. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, for example, Mixie and Jackson, sorry to earmuffs, but we will be taking them to uh, the bamboo farms here as sustainability is a huge interest in Costa Rica and of our students. Thank you students for pushing that agenda forward. And they will be challenged to design sustainable furniture and actually build it. And then of course, there is the project. And this is where the learning gets sticky. It will not be fleeting because they will be applying it to a project. Now the projects are as distinctive and unique as our students' needs. Some of them might be doing apprenticeships. Some of them might be making murals. Some of them might be launching a business. Last semester, we launched two, two businesses. So all this could be part of the project. The project's point is to showcase to your audience of what's next that you're ready. Now, what does a day in the life look like at Mix? 
So in the morning, there's always wellness. We are deeply committed to wellness. This is part, and every campus has its unique spin to it. There's yoga. Of course, we're in Costa Rica. There's surfing. We are blocks away from Manuel Antonio National Park. Every campus has a commitment to wellness. All of our staff are committed to wellness, and this is something we live and breathe. We are a holistic program that educates the whole person. Then every day, uh, for, for four days a week, because I'll get to the right, our place-based learning day is a whole day experience, but they will be in the online lab. The online lab is a research-based cohort learning um, moment where the students are brought together because we know that just by putting students in a room together during their online learning, they're four times more likely to complete their studies. Being by yourself and not having a cohort of peers all looking and learning together can be isolating and most likely you will not continue. So in the learning lab, we don't just have students sitting and doing their online lab. We have facilitators checking in, setting KPIs, goals for our students. Every student creates a goal at the beginning of the, the session to complete. Then at the end of the session, we make again the learning sticky. How do you remember things? Teach it to another. So at the end of each learning lab, the students will teach their discipline to a peer which is a really exciting way for our students to actually get exposure to all different fields without even studying them. Then in the afternoon, there are, it, it vacillates between the two, how-tos and project time. How-tos, there is our Sydney last semester changing a car tire, um, is that class that we spoke about. And then the project time. The project time sometimes is out in the field. Sometimes our students for their project will have to go interview people for, for feedback on their projects, or they will be building and we will be doing using the Stanford's design thinking framework, which we teach all the students. And it's really the, the foundation of our curriculum and project-based learning. They will be, be doing design challenges. But the most exciting day, and I know Mixie's smiling about this, the most exciting day by far is our place-based learning day. And this was the last semester's favorite. To teach creativity, which is a very important tool for the 21st century, century knowledge-based economy, more and more employers are looking for creative out-of-box thinkers. We took our students to Wynwood Wall, Walls in um, Miami. And if you haven't been there, go and, look, go and look for our mix uh, mural. And we spoke to artists. We learned about creative iteration. And then our students left their mark on Miami by uh, getting to do their own graffiti art and making a, a collaborative mural. Okay, I am really excited to introduce this person to my right now. Uh, this is Adam Levin. He's a chief of experience and truly a student favorite. Thank you so much, Abby. And thanks everyone for contributing in the chat. We're keeping track of all those for the questions when we get there. Um, I know we mentioned it earlier, but my name is Adam Levin and I'm the head of student experience here at Mix. I'm lucky enough to live on our campuses surrounded by these incredible students and staff. And between our first semester in Miami and our upcoming semester in Costa Rica, there isn't one person, whether a learner or teacher, who wouldn't define this program as a transformational experience in both their education goals and in their life. And you've gotten to hear that directly from a few students tonight, but I wanted to show you this video here to let you hear it from a few more, along with some familiar faces. So just one moment. Hello, my name is Jackson and I am from Delaware. Hey everybody, my name is Brooke Chauncey. Hi, my name is Faith, I'm from Arizona. Hi, my name is Isaac. Hi, I'm Mixie and I'm from Michigan. My name is Maximus, I'm 19 and from Ohio. Hey, I'm Eric and I'm from upstate New York. Before coming to the mix, I, my mind was very scattered in what I wanted to do with my life. The notorious question of what do you want to do with your life? Is, before Mix, I was somebody who had just graduated high school and was looking for something that I could use to reapply to my dream architecture college that I didn't get into. Before I came to the Mix, I struggled with what I wanted to do with life. Before discovering Mix, I didn't quite know where my life was heading. Before I came to the Mix, I really didn't know what I wanted to do for a career. I did not know what I wanted to do in the beginning of this year uh, before coming to Mix. I had no idea where to start. I started talking to the mixed team. I started getting a plan ready for my life and for what I wanted to do. At mix, I 
discovered a way that I could learn specifically exactly what I wanted to learn. And work really hard and do what I feel is right in the moment. Experience Miami, meet new people, all of that. And reflecting on my time in Miami, uh, it's been, it's the start of something fantastic. I came to study entrepreneurship and realized a passion of mine is building businesses after I started a business of my own, a travel-based uh, jewelry brand. I applied this to my project at Mix by creating a hospitality app that utilizes trading and bartering skills and connections rather than your typical payment method. I'm super passionate about the project I'm working on right now. It's involving music and storytelling and next semester I'm super interested in the visual side. In my project I decided to do phlebotomy and I found my passion. I did a blood drive to show that I wanted to help people and show that we can make a difference. Something that has radically changed my life um, and it was such a blessing to be able to present it. I felt so accomplished and felt pre prepared to do it, not only in Miami, but to the world. I uh, learned how to push myself out of my comfort zone, which helped me develop uh, even more skills that I can use in my career later. I'm gonna be a step ahead of everybody else. So I just felt so equipped to work with, um, better with teams, work with better leadership, and time management and this is the mix this is 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 mix and this is mix love that video and <laughs> you know i want to shout out some comments we saw in the chat earlier from from hattie from pamela from miss sheehan and i think from a lot of other people on here about their children struggling to find their path within the current traditional options. And, you know, you saw some in that video going through the same thing. As Abby mentioned, we talk to people all day long, and that is the most consistent factor. And it's very heartwarming for, you know, all 57 people on this call right now to be in the journey to provide an alternative together. And that's how it always feels with us. And that's how it's looking for this upcoming year. So, Let's talk about that for a second. For this fall, we're gonna have 150 learners at our campus in Miami. And we travel not just because it's the best way to get people off their devices and into the real world, but also because it's statistically proven to be, to be the best thing that can help a learner in their development for their education, for their personal life, and for their career goals. And the data you're seeing here is really staggering. Just a few specific ones within all of these that I want to call out are the 95% plus increase in maturity and confidence that those who study abroad reported, as well as the 200% increased advantage of finding a job within one year of graduation that those who study abroad hold over those who do not. It's all based in the data. And so it's worth mentioning again that with our campuses capped at 150 learners, there's so much more intention and focus into the community that we are building at each location. And I've seen some comments in the chat about the process, who you're looking for. I know one was in there for the age. We're looking for students between the ages of 18 to 24, but the biggest fact is this community that we're looking to build. At the smallest traditional university, you'd be lucky if 150 people knew your name. At Mix, you have 150 family members. And I love that both Mixie and Jackson put it in those words tonight without us even talking about it before. We are only looking for students that are super passionate about furthering their goals, who want to launch themselves to that next step in life, who enjoy learning hands-on and through projects versus in textbooks and 300-person lectures, and who really want to be active members of our community. One of the most stressful parts of this college decision is the application process. And we're trying to change that as well. And I know a few of you asked about it. We don't look at GPA, we don't look at SAT, we don't look at ACT because there's not one piece of data out there that shows that those numbers mean anything towards you being su successful later in life. And we only evaluate a one-on-one -on -one interview that we conduct with each student where we really get to know the candidates well throughout the entire process to make sure not only are they a good fit for mix, but most importantly, is mix a great fit for them. 
So I know right after this, we have our Q&A coming up next, but some people may need to jump. Thank you so much for being on. I hope you stay on for the q and I, I can already tell it's gonna be really productive conversation. Uh, if anyone does jump, the next steps, if you're interested, would be to schedule a call with our admissions team. Karen's gonna drop a link for that in the chat. And to thank all of you for providing such a great conversation tonight on this important topic, we're offering $500 off tuition for all of those of you who have attended. And I know included in those next steps, we're gonna talk a lot about admissions, financial aid, all those things. Well, let's kick it back over to Karen for our Q&A. Great, that was wonderful, you guys. Thank you. That was a lot of information in a very short amount of time. And I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. But there are so many great questions I wanna cover. There are a lot of questions about some of the, the how mix works, right? How admissions works and some of the details, and they'll be pretty easy for us to answer if we don't get to them tonight in a follow-up email or we'll call you and make sure that you have that information. I want to, I want to take advantage of having this group here tonight to, to dig into something that seems to be a, a real theme among, among everybody. And that is students not or young people not knowing what they want to do, feeling lost, feeling confused. And um, we are fortunate, I, I just saw her pop up, um, we're fortunate to have our head of coaching with us tonight, uh, Claire Sellers. So hello, Claire, uh, maybe we could spotlight her. Um, Claire, I think it would be helpful for the students and parents here to better understand what coaching means, especially for those young people who show up and they they really do feel lost. They really aren't sure. Like what role does coaching play in helping them navigate the next semester? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Karen. And so excited to see all of you here. Um, coaching is really about helping you figure out what you want to do next. So I know so many of you, you know, you have passions or maybe you don't really feel connected to a passion and that's okay too. And so our approach in coaching is really from the inside out. And so we help you connect and identify what actually matters to you. And then we help you translate that into action steps. And so you're actually getting clear on the path forward while you're learning tools that you can use for the rest of your life to help you increase your confidence. I saw that in the chat to help you manage anxiety and to help you just feel more connected to who you are. Because when you have those tools in your tool belt, the path forward actually becomes clear quite quickly. And so imagine having a coach one-on-one -on -one with you throughout your entire mixed journey, who's really there kind of walking alongside you, guiding you, totally unbiased, not a parent, not a teacher. And that's really the gift of coaching is, it, is that you really have kind of a guide with you, helping you get clear on what's next and then encouraging you to take steps forward to make that happen. Awesome. And since we have our students here, I'd actually love to throw it back to Jackson and Mixie um, in thinking about, and both of you were on a journey of personal discovery. And I'd love to hear from you specifically how, what, what you found at Mix that helped you navigate the uncertainty. Like be specific though. Either of you can go first. Um, real quick, is the rain distracting? Just started pouring in Miami. No, okay. you're fine. Soothing. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't want to go to sleep just today. Um, okay, so um, finding, um, sorry, that's distracted. It was a question again. I got a bad memory. <laughs> that's <laughs> okay. Sorry. That's totally okay. We're just talking about students like you and like Mixie who have gone on a journey, right? Where you, it's yeah, really yeah, been yeah, a yeah. sort of journey of self discovery. What specifically 100%. was it about the Mix program that facilitated that for you, in addition to the yeah. coaching that Claire just described? Um, if I'm going to be completely honest, I really think it was going in with a plan. And like, as many of you, I assume know, plans never go into their plan, which that ended up taking me in a direction of finding out what was better than the plan. Um, and because my original plan was to potentially study some film stuff, some uh, film and television. Um, I changed that. I kind of kept doing it, but then my project changed like a bunch of times. And um, yeah, for me, it's going in with an idea, that idea changing, and then that keeps happening again until you see something consistent happening. And now 
that led me to where I am now, where I'm super excited about the projects I'm working on. And um, I can't wait for the future. Awesome. Thanks, Jackson. Mix, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, really just adding on to what Jackson said, it was definitely the same for me where I went in with this set plan. Um, I'm going to be a project manager for um, home building companies. And then I got to mix and quickly realized like, yeah, that was my plan as a senior in high school. And um, that it would still be great. Like I would still, I'm sure I'd enjoy that. But um, through Mix, I learned like travel is absolutely amazing. I haven't had the opportunity to leave the country yet. So most of my family thinks I'm absolutely insane for going to Costa Rica <laughs> for three months for my first time out of the country. But um, yeah, it's just every every part of Mix really aided me in that from travel to um, everyone in our house to my coach um, and yeah many more. I just want to That's add awesome. Karen if yeah. I could add please something. of course. I love you know Mixie and Jackson you talked about having a plan. What I love about the mix and why it's so flexible and what we've designed it for is it's okay to try things and then turn around. So normally you usually find out if you don't like what you're doing at the end of your sophomore year and then it's too late. All that time and money. And when we interview sophomores in that position, we say, well, are you gonna change your major? No, 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 I don't wanna do, I, I can't start over again. I can't afford to start over again. But when Mixie decided, she first came, Mixie, if you don't mind, and was taking construction management courses and she's like, oh no, this isn't the part I'm interested in. I'm interested in the project management piece. For no money, for no, no change, no, no discipline, no, you did it the wrong way. We changed it. She learned from that course what she liked and what she didn't like. And she'd have to wait an entire year or entire term, a wasted time and money to make that choice. And it's really empowering. And I'm proud of you guys for doing that. Yeah, you guys have great stories and there are many more, which I wish we could share with all of you tonight. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try to squeeze in one last question. I wanna be respectful of people's time and it's kind of a tactical one that I'll throw over to you, Abby. Um, maybe Adam as well. Can you talk about sort of like how it works, right? Like how many semesters does one go to? Do I get a certificate? Can I get a degree? Like just kind of summarize the headlines and then we can share the details with folks after this session. The best part of that answer is that there is no one answer because each student is going to get a personalized plan through this admissions and applications and course console process that's not gonna look like any of the other students. But we do have a philosophy on it. And that is that we would like you to be at Mix for the shortest amount of time possible to take you from where you are now to where you wanna go. We wanna launch you to that. And we don't want you to spend a day or a dollar more than you need to. And so at the end of that one semester, or we think you know the average comes to around one year, we have some students who will be coming back to Mix to continue their studies, maybe pursuing an online degree. We have other students who are gonna launch out into the workforce and will have started a business with us or will have gotten really direct to work certifications. And then there is a final group of students who will be transferring back into a traditional university with a lot more clarity on what they wanna do, a lot more return on the investment they're about to make and a lot of credits that are gonna go along with that. So it's, it, it's fun because there is no direct answer to it other than we are going to get you where you're trying to go. And it's going to be through all of these different pieces that we've mentioned. And it's just so empowering to hear that because if you think about what the traditional is, no matter what you wanna be, astronaut, writer, actor, it's the same amount of time, the same amount of price. And that doesn't even make sense, right? And here we are saying it depends and that's so shocking. But if you think about the traditional path, no, that's shocking. How can that be true? That no matter what I do, no matter what my earning potential can be on the other end, I just pay the same price and do the same amount of time. So I hope this excites you. There is no cookie, it's, it's empowering. It also could be overwhelming to students. Wow, because they've never had the opportunity to curate their education. and. We were, but we are there to help you along that route. Awesome, thank you both. I, I love that, just kind of thinking back to my comments earlier about 
my son, I want exactly what's right for him. And you can't really find exactly in any traditional path. And we do exactly, and we do it really well. So thank you for those thoughts. And I'm, I'm so sorry that we won't get to all the other great questions. I promise you we will get there um, after the session. We're at the top of the hour, so I'm going to wrap us up. I wanna thank you all so much for being here tonight. I hope you found the information that we shared and the conversation helpful, and that it sparked some new thoughts and ideas uh, as you and your family go about choosing the right next step for you. I am going to, right now, I just posted a link to a survey in the chat. We'll also send it out via email later tonight in case you don't have time to grab it. We'd love to hear any feedback about tonight's program, but perhaps more importantly, we'd love to hear from you what other topics you'd like to hear about or hear more about um, from us in the future. I'd love to have more conversations like this where we can really get into um, some of the topics that we scratched the surface on tonight. So with that, Thank you again. Thank you, students. Best of luck in Costa Rica. We are here for all of you uh, and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.